So our gel test innovations for 19.3 cover a set of new features, the innovations, the software aspects of things. And then if we have time, we can go over a little bit on the off highway and ag, but I know most of you guys here are for, for the on road. Okay. So we're going to front this in a different way. Um, instead of just listing the new things, we're going to say what's new, then what it's used for, um, which most of us are already going to know, but just in case, make it clear, and then what value we extract from it. There's a lot of features that have an added value that sometimes we overlook. So by sharing this information with different people from the industry, it allows us to take more of an advantage of what Delta provides to us and, and so on. Okay. So the software tweaks. First thing that we've introduced, and you've seen this in the past uh, versions, is one new module here. Okay, so this is part of our info online module. As you all know, this one is an optional module. All the ones that have this little globe are included in that license. It is an extra license, but it brings a lot of information from troubleshooting trees by fault code and by symptoms, TSVs, and then in the last couple of updates, we added the component replacement guides and now the repair times. The repair times are gonna be based on the information that we extract or we purchase from the OEM. And then by reference of experienced mechanics that do this over and over again. So it pretty much tells you for every system, the time required to carry out every action. And this has a huge value because I've run into a lot of shops that they're not entirely sure if they're overcharging, undercharging, if they're taking too long. So it's a great reference to, to know what the OEM considers an appropriate time uh, of repair, especially because normally that's what they apply in, in warranties. Now I'm not saying that this is good for a warranty service, but it is a great guide to understand how long you have to do a replacement. Every time that you go about one of these actions, all you have to do is click on one of the boxes and then it will add up all the time from the, from the repairs. So did you get these times from the dealers? Yes, uh, as I was saying, we get the uh, the times from the OEMs, um, majorly, majorly. Um, so with the Right to Repair Act, we're allowed to purchase this information. So that's what we do. We go out and we purchase it for the different systems, and then we include it into the into the Delta software. At the end of the day, it's an added feature for you guys, and it's something that well, saves time and guides you so that you don't you don't spend too much time or undercharge, as I was saying before. Guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the mics off. All right. So if you have any questions, write them in the chat. I'll read them out loud and then we'll go over them. Okay. Next thing here, we're gonna go to the permanent expert mode activation. So I see that Jason is here connected somewhere. Jason is uh, one of the gentlemen that works with us. He's been assisting on this for quite some time. So it's it's one of the things that people request and we develop in favor of that. So Pretty much the expert mode is a code that's given to the owner of the tool. The expert mode allows you to do all the bi-directional controls. So if you guys are looking at this and you've never used the expert mode, that means you're using gel test to about 40% of its capacities. With this, you're gonna be able to set the parameters, run calibrations, run regions. The problem will used to be that every time that you signed on to gel test, you would have to introduce that expert mode code, which is not a big deal because you just put the code in and for your, all your interactions, it's gonna be there. Now we've added this button here in the bottom where it says keep the expert mode activated for each execution of the application. That means that once you run the update, you click on this one time and it'll maintain for all of your interactions. So every time that you open and use Delta test, you're gonna be able to have the expert mode activated. Now on a side note, the expert mode does change every year, one time a year. It changes every time that the 0.1 version. So next year in February, when 20.1 comes out, you guys will need to request a new expert mode code, introduce that, and then if you click on this, you won't need to do that until February 2021, okay? Another step here was some of the actions that we're doing calibrations are, or we're doing adjustments require for the ECM to run a reset, okay? So sometimes you'll see that it says, put the key in the lock position, hold it there for 30 seconds, 60 seconds, 90 seconds, and then turn it on and run it for two minutes. That's how the ECM resets itself, right? The problem that we used to have before was that you pretty much had to pull out your cell phone and calculate it or do a little bit of guesswork. Now, sometimes um, if you don't have that information on hand, if you don't hold for those 60 seconds, the calibration won't go through, okay? So we've introduced this feature so that once you run it, you press the start button and then you're capable of seeing the amount of time left and when you're ready. 
So here I see a question on the chat. So let me see, give me a second. When installing the software, do you enter the code for expert and is the code provided? So yes, uh, when installing the software, once you finish installing it, it tells you to generate your expert mode code. So now for safety reasons, it's something that you guys have to generate on your own. And this goes through your user area. When you create your user and your password, so it's your email and the password that you decide to set, you can either go through the, um, let me show you here on the screen. You can either go directly from the software or it says here, click here to obtain expert mode. And then and that'll take you to the web page. You fill out the pertinent information of who's in charge, who's responsible for that. And then it'll send you the information to your email or to your cell phone number via text message. Okay. That code is going to be valid for that whole year. Here we have a question from Jason that says, would it be safe to reference that it comes from Mitchell? No, it's, it does not come from Mitchell. Mitchell would be a, a competitor that does a different type of integration. So it's, it has nothing to do with Mitchell. We, Mitchell provides similar information um, in a different structure, in a different layout, and for different systems. So the guidelines is that we're trying to achieve the same things, but through different channels, okay? Jumping back on track here. So those were the three updates that we introduced on the software-wise, and now we're gonna go into the, the coverage elements. So starting off with Allison, there's gonna be location information. So here we see that you have the solenoid valves and they're telling you the locations and for the, for the pressure control solenoid locations. So that's something that helps you guide. So in the way that we approach things is every component is gonna show you, you're gonna be able to look up all the components and then it's gonna link you to the operating diagrams, the wiring diagrams, and then that red dot will show you the exact location. So when we're going through the question mark in our troubleshooting trees and it shows us the location, again, that red dot tells us the exact component location, saves us time on doing that guesswork. The other thing that we wanted to bring out um, to notice on the Allison side is that we have a, a new wave of, of vehicles. So the hybrid vehicles, the electric vehicles, and, and so on. So we already have all the systems for the hybrid series. So up top here, up top, um, if you've heard me before, one of the vlogs, it's gonna be like your Windows browser. So here we're in Allison hybrid series, the H4050 EP fourth gen transmission management system. So now this ACM is adjusted to the electronics. Um, one of the most important things is that there's gonna be a pop-up when you go into there, giving you the safety instructions for hybrid vehicles for high voltage lines, because it's an increase and it's a considerable increase. It's going from 12 volts to some a few hundred volts. So now it's not just a small shock, it's something that could be dangerous. So we've included, first of all, being able to do all the functionalities that you need to do to get the repair, but especially the safety features, because we have to be careful with these things as, as they come along. Moving on to the final part, and I get a lot of questions on this because Allison has a, an interesting feature, it's called prognostics, okay? So this is pretty much a feature that we've included since 19.2 and we're continuing to adapt 19.3 and 21 has a, an even more advanced one, okay? So what are the prognostics? And these are a set of features included to define and predict the transmission health. Now, what does this mean? Well, pretty much it's the maintenance light. You're capable of setting that. That's the feature that's coming out in 20.1. But every time that you do an oil change or you want to do an oil life monitor, so it'll tell you when you need to change it, you can reset it to let it know that it's a, it's a new one. Same thing with the filter and same thing with the resets. So going through here, through our Allison series, you go to maintenance and here you have the oil change, reset of the clutch wearing, auto detect oil level sensors and so on. These are what Allison uh, defines as prognostics. And then the feature is that if you want to do it through the console, well, it's, it's what I call the, the Street Fighter move, right? That you have to put the ND, ND, and R, and, and you have to figure that out somehow. It's either in some manual or you get it online somewhere. Well, the way that we approach it is that you go into the system and it'll allow you to do the reset. So you just press the reset button and you're good to go. So it simplifies the process, okay? And as I was saying, uh, just a heads up for next year, 20.1, you could give it the own, its own life cycle. So if you want to change the oil every 5,000 miles, you'll click on that so that the light will pop up every 5,000 miles and they'll know that it needs to be replaced. Right. Next, we're jumping over to Bendix and the braking systems. So I like to call this the ADAS revolution. Right. So ADAS is a system of calibration. There's a huge hype on this in, in cars. 
and then that obviously reverts or transfers to our industry. Um, and there's a huge hype, and there's there's even some people selling some pretty expensive tools on the ADAS. And it turns out that in Europe, it can't make sense. So we sent out a, a communication about our ADAS system in Europe, where it has a whole set of sensors, and then it has a board, and you have to carry out a set of features. And it's a pretty complex process. But it turns out that in the States, um, most of our systems are pretty much manual calibrations and over-the-road tests. Now, it's important to understand that this is going to be under releases and procedures that you will be able to look into how to go about that. Okay, so here in releases procedures, I'll tell you where to calibrate, where to adjust, where to go about the features. Um, and then there is going to be one where we're going to include, a, it's going to be sort of like a board so that it can reference. And that's the Wingman Fusion FLC20. Right? That one is going to require a panel. It's going to be driver assistance camera and the forward looking radar. So these are things that you're going to be able to calibrate on the newer systems that go with the Bendix system. Okay, so. When you guys hear about ADAS, there's about six systems in the in the states that you need for calibration. Only one is going to require that panel, and they're all going to be covered under gel test uh, diagnostics. Okay. Continuing with Cummins, right? So Cummins, um, ADAS. What does that stand for? That's a good question. Uh, I'll get the guys to check on that because I never remember the the full the full definition. Okay, so we'll type it in the in the chat. Um, all right. So continuing with Cummins, here we see uh, the systems that are available. So we've been adding this to a bunch of new systems, and and this is where always where we always explain that the renewals are so important because the updates are not just for the new stuff. They're not just upstream. We're going to be able to develop everything that's out there on the field. So you guys are working on things from 1998. So the, the core is going to be 2004 to 2015, and then you start getting the newer ones when they run out of warranty. So when we put in new features, it's going to go in for those older models as well. So that's why it's so important to keep up that information, keep up to date, and, and be able to do it. Um, one of the features that's added on these systems that we he see here, the ISB 2150 um, and the ISM CM 876, it's going to be the data record, the last 10 regions. So the information has been requested uh, many times in the past. So through our feedback, we've recorded that, and now we have the after treatment data record. When you click on here, it's going to give you the option for the last regions. It's also going to give you the option to measure the suit content on the particular filter, your max values, and then exhaust gas temperature after the particular fixed filter max value. All right, so you're gonna be able to select any of those three options. And when you select, this is what it's gonna come out to. It'll show you for your last 10 regions, the ECM operation times, the suit level initial values, final values, DOC inlet, and then the final one, output temperatures and differential pressures. So it's gonna be telling you which ones are incomplete, which ones are complete, what are the maximum values reached during the lifespan, info on the suit content in the DPF and the exhaust gas temperature at the outlet of the DPF. So this information lets you know if the regions were carried out properly or they were interrupted through the process. We've seen a lot that regions sometimes get interrupted by the user because they have to cut it off and they have to continue. Or sometimes they have to go to lunch and they cut it off. Or sometimes there's an interruption and there's a code that's cutting it off at 700 degrees. So this information is valuable to understand why it's not doing the region properly. Our next feature here in Cummins is going to be PTO parameters. So PTO parameters are going to be pretty much 100%. Um, I think we're missing one or two just because these features have been requested um, little by little. And PTO settings are especially important when you have box trucks, um, all these utility companies that have the cranes in the back and that they go up to the lines. So your AT&T, your FPLs, your all these electric companies that are very regional. Um, PTO settings are, are a fundamental part of them, so that's why they're being developed and integrated on there. Okay. And then here's another one that's very interesting. So I, I'm not sure if everyone's heard of the, the multiplexing systems. So, all right, before I jump into that, here in the chat they were saying that uh, ADAS stands for Advanced Driver Assistance Systems. Okay, so it's pretty much the calibration of all the all, all the information there. Okay, all right, so that cleared up. We're jumping back to the 1939 multiplexing parameters. As I was saying, not everybody knows what they are or that they exist, and these are only available for, only used to be available in Cummins Insight, the, the higher versions on it. And multiplexing parameters is pretty much a configuration 
uh, of the parameters in the ECM. Um, it's the wiring of how the ECM communicates with all the other systems. So by being able to modify the multiplex parameters, um, you can configure any ECM or switch what is on the vehicle. So let's say that we want to switch um, the, a system, the AC system. With the multiplex, you can see all the systems that can be directed to and the status of each one. So you can direct a signal to the ECM that is in charge of managing that action. So you would go here and you would either enable something or disable it. So here it's the DF tank state. And then here it's the information that you're getting, steering axle SA8. Let's say that you wanted to change that to the, to the HVAC system. It would be SA25. Now, why is this important and why is it necessary? Pretty much because when you do these over the air updates, um, when you run these calibrations or reprograms, uh, reprogramming of the ECM from Cummins, it'll set you a template. That template is not necessary, not necessarily what you need for your vehicle. So it will adjust it to those parameters, but then you're going to need to modify it to what you need. Okay. So that'll give you like a generic template. And then what you're going to do is personalize it to what you need. Um, so it's, it's an advanced feature, um, and, but it's, it's pretty awesome that you're capable of doing this with, with an aftermarket tool. Um, if we go on with that part, the other option, instead of doing the over the year updates is when you have a fleet and they're all under the same configuration. So we also have this feature that was brought out in 19.2, but it links into what we're doing now and it's the ECU memory. So you can copy the ECM from a vehicle. And then you copy that information to dial test. When would you be doing this? Well, when you have a fried ECM, when you have a blank ECM, when you buy a secondhand ECM. And this is normally when you have, let's say, five vehicles with the same Cummins engine and you want them to be calibrated for the same um, activities. Then you're going to be able to copy it to, to dial test and then copy it to that ECM. When you're copying it, all the reprogramming, all the parameters are embedded into it. So you don't have to do that multiplexing feature. But when you're resetting it through the e through the OEM download, then that's when you have to go about it. Okay. Um, are there any other multiplex uh, multiplexing manufacturers available? Currently, um, that's a feature that, from my knowledge, is only on Cummins. But I will request more information on that. And right now, we only have it on Cummins. Okay. And then in line with this. This one's another big one. I've gone into so many shops that uh, owner operators have come in with a secondhand vehicle and they've tried to modify something and they didn't have a password. So then that breaks off uh, a time killer. You have to call the, the owner and the fleet, then the dealer, then the old owner. And then you try to get the password. Sometimes it takes weeks and you can't even get it because nobody really cares about that. So there's a feature that is also an advanced function, which is called backdoor password. So you pretty much zap it. And what you can do here is erase the, the factory password, even though it's um, even though you don't have the original password. And that allows you to, again, set the parameters and be able to go about the repair. Now we jump over to Detroit Diesel. Okay. Here we have for the GHD 14, GHD 17 uh, vehicles, expanded coverage for PTO and re remote PTO parameters. Again, what I was saying, you're capable of doing all these features. But the new one that's most important, it's not just an increment, is the DEF pump priming checking, okay? Um, the DEF system is not a typical Boshtronics, how all the other ones are, but this is a new EcoFit UL2 provided by Cummins, okay? So it pretty much does a priming of the DEF system and it, pur it purges the system in order to see if it's free of any leak or flaw. So in order to validate a repair or a faulty component within the system, it, you have to run this test. This test is automatic and then it will tell you if it's been calibrated or not. So with this, we make sure that the circuit is operational and that no issue arises and it as well links into other tests that are available inside the system checks, okay, which is going to be the efficiency test and uh, the DEF pump action to verify the nozzle of the injectors. All right, that's that's the feature that's there. Um, it's very interesting for the after treatment side. If you guys have any questions on this one, let me know. I can I can go about it a little bit, and and that's pretty much what it does. You're running pressure through it to make sure that the nozzles and everything is working in the in the circuit of the DEF system. International. So international is a big one I see here on the chat, body controllers. Um, until now, body controllers on international have been the biggest headache 
for most of you. Um, Diamond Logic Builder was probably the only solution. There were some other competitors of ours, some aftermarkets that will give you something, but not everything. So we've put a lot of effort on that to, to help our, our customers request. And now for the 2007 vehicles in newer, you can have all these features in the body controller. So we're talking about the HVAC compressor, uh, lights activation. So you're gonna be able to turn on the high beam, front lamps, fogs, turn signals, and then wipers and washer pump. You have not only read and clear codes and your monitoring information, but you have your component actuation, system checks. So it's pretty complete. And by 20.1, it's gonna be filled out to about 100% of what Diamond Logic does. Um, you're gonna have the diagrams, which that one's always a big one because not everyone has access to how things are wired or where the ECMs are, are located. And you're also gonna be having the, the troubleshooting by, by symptoms, all right? All right, let me see if I'm missing anything here. All right, so that one, that one there. Within International, uh, new things that are coming out is the A26 engine, or well, saying new, it was, was brought out last year, 20, sorry, late 2017 uh, TMC. And we're starting to see more and more of these on the road. So for those of you that don't know, A26 is a collaboration between Navistar and uh, MAN in, in Europe. And it's been available here for two years. So we're gonna have all those PTO remote connections. So as you can see here, the coverage is, is pretty solid. It's a relatively new engine and we're capable of running all the important elements. So for example, your particular filter region, filter replacement, your oil change, all these things are working uh, pretty effectively and we're capable of supporting full coverage on A26 engines, right? So that's basically out there for, for you guys. Mm. Just to go over the max force uh, crank case vent maintenance reset. So this is a new reset that's available for, for these maintenances. So everything that's something that needs to be reset and needs to be set up before an action is carried out, we're gonna call those maintenance, right? So they're gonna be there. And there's more than 40 new component replacement guides. So we were talking about that it was implemented in the last update. Well, this one has been adding more and more information about it. We continue to pack our, and this was a big one. So pack our, uh, unfortunately, we all have a lot of troubles with this um, because how old pack our is. So this is for the EAS4 EcoFit, um, the UL2, and it has the DPF region available. Um, for example, when you run into KWs or Peterbilts that are 2017 or newer. Now this is a rudinary action, so that allows you to reduce the amount of suit. With this, you can reset the filter when the filter needs to be changed. Now, sometimes there's an issue that you're on the side of the road and it goes into D-rate mode and there's no way to get it, get it back on. So here's a trick that you can use. Um, you can go into the system, dual filter reset, even without having done the, the region, and you trick the ECM um, to launch that region. So you can do it on the side of the road if that's the case, or you can drive it for a little bit until you make it back to the shop and do the region at the shop, leaving the vehicle fully operational, okay? So sometimes when you go into these situations, you run that uh, filter reset, and then it allows you to do the, the calibration, okay? Or the, the re regeneration. Continuing with PACCAR, uh, VGT verification. Now, what does that mean? So VGT is one of the most costly and fragile systems in the vehicle. That means that it's delicate and it breaks. Um, we have we have had for a while now the, the calibration for the initial install and then calibrating the system. And with this, what we do is that we can test the status and functions and decide if we need to calibrate the, the VGT or not. So pretty much we're testing the turbo compressor here. And here it says engine variable geometry turbocharger actuator position. We're moving the position of the, of the actuator to see if it's responding properly. Now, if that's not working, that's when we run into the VGT calibration, and we can do it um, for that, again, the initial install. That one shows you how to do the, the mechanical aspect of things, where to take the, the bolt off and the nuts and everything, how to separate it, where you have to put the click on, and then at the end, it does the electrical calibration, okay? So we're gonna be able to do that verification, and then if that's not enough, then we go and we do the calibration of the VGT. Both of these functions available for these pack cars.
Here we have another one that's interesting, the PMCI2. Um, here we have a code, all right? So EGR powered reduction um, is something that comes out after a set of hours of being available. And there's two codes that are directly related. A few months ago, we did a case study where we associated this, and it's the P1495 and the P1496. Now, if you don't have the vehicle with you, you can go into the manual diagnostics option and pull out the troubleshooting tree, and it'll tell you how to go about it. So in this case, since they're both related, the 1495 and the 1496, it'll give you the access to the troubleshooting to go about it. Now, what does this look like? If you go into the next slide, um, here it's going to show you how the EGR power reduction disabled. You go to maintenance, disable the EGR power reduction. So you do the disable, and then that clears out the 1496, and then you're allowed to fix the 1495. That's a three-step process that you have to do, and that's been a it's been a big jump for these type of engines because if not, when you had that scenario, it was I don't remember the exact number, but our customer told us it was over a thousand dollars if you took it to the dealer. So that feature right there, whenever it comes out, that's that's a big money saver. All right, new manufacturer jumping into Mac and Volvo. We're gonna start off with the EMS V3 engine. Um, here we have the after treatment fuel injector maintenance reset. Okay, so that means if you change the injector, but you don't run this option, the code is still there. So there's a, an engine code on, and you have to run that reset. If not, nothing will happen. That will be here uh, after treatment fuel injector adaptive factor again under the maintenance. And then the other feature that we bring out is the SCR inducement mode disable. Um, this helps you out to clear the fault code 207F and 103C. Right. Pretty much it's telling you that the SCR is losing efficiency. So you have to go in through this, delete the inducement mode, and then it'll allow you to clear the codes and go about the repair. These are advanced features that you can't do with, with many of the other uh, softwares. And here in the manual diagnostics, um, you'd be able to access the troubleshooting and go to the repair process. Um, all of these things allow you to understand a little bit more how all these things are set up, because the manufacturer says those things. Sometimes you have to go first through a reset, then you have to go to a calibration, then you have to go and clear the codes. So by getting this, the, the logic of fixing the vehicle gets integrated into the software and normally saves us a lot of time and, and money there. And then we're gonna jump off from all our manufacturers and we're gonna finish off with the, well, not finish off, sorry. We're gonna continue with the Meritor WAPCO, the trailer system, okay. Here we have the, Habs 2M RSS, where RSS is our roll stability support. And what we've developed is the end of the line test. The end of the line test is something that needs to be carried out in trailers. And it's done after reprogramming the ECM. Okay. This test checks the speed sensor, modulators, ABS warning lamps, and it allows you to erase the codes when there's a modification to the end. So make sure that all the functions are operating as they should. So it's a maintenance. One of the codes that it clears, so when you do that reprogramming or recalibration of the ECM, you'll get a code that is 254. So when that code comes up, the only way of doing it is by running an end of the line test and getting that light off, okay? Um, if this doesn't get done properly, then the ABS lamp will, will stay on, right? This ECM, there's an option here in parameters where we can do just like we saw before with Cummins, where we can copy the ECM and then paste it to Dell test and then vice versa. You, do that, you don't need the end of the line test, but with the other options, it'll allow you to get that, that code off, all right? Our next step is gonna be Dodge. So when we're talking about Dodge, in this case, we're referring to the 6.7 liter Cummins engine, all right? Um, we've added new features that are, that have been demanded. So VGT calibration has been included. Um, just as we saw it in the heavy duty side, it'll give you the initial installation and then the, the calibration. So it allows you to change the positions for the VGT to guarantee the correct functions. Okay. VGT works for, for the turbo. So just to go over a little bit of the value of the VGT, um, it's called variable geometry turbo. And its geometry gets modified based on the increase of pressure of the turbo. The section modifies to increase or decrease, decrease the escape gases to allow the correct functioning. So pretty much more pressure generates more air. More air generates more torque, all right? So by doing an optimal calibration, we're, what we're going to do is reduce the consumption of the, of the diesel or the gas and increase the torque, all right? So for newer models, 
2017 and up, there's another issue. So this um, Dodge is running something with like Packer. So Packer is going into central services. So that means that everything that's aftermarket has certain limitations on, on getting around them. And what Dodge is doing is that they're creating a sort of security access uh, dongle where it's it's not really legal. They actually have a lawsuit from the rest of the manufacturers in Europe because they're trying to shift towards a monopoly. But right now, while that gets sorted out, there's a difficulty in getting information and, and doing advanced features in 2017 and up. Right? And that's going to be across the board. So if somebody tells you that they have full functionality for a, a, a Dodge 2018, 2019, um, it's going to be either the OEM tool or they're, they're lying to you, right? So I just wanted to get that across so we can understand a little bit more. And then here... Um, Finish off with light, medium duty, and it's a new model for the Mercedes Sprinter. I don't know if you guys have gone into it, but Sprinter has pretty much uh, awesome coverage in the sense that there's a lot of body computers, and then um, there's a lot of systems that you can go into. I mean, anywhere from the heating system in, in, in the rear view mirrors, uh, all the ECMs that you see there, and all those things are... Smith Power Products, this is Lee. How can I help you? Yes. Uh, let me see. All right, so on, on my side, this would be the last slide for the commercial vehicle side. Um, if you guys have any questions that you want to run over before we jump into something else, um, here I'm seeing Jose that's saying... Uh, for Jason's question that the Wabco calibration was available for Bendix, um, we're getting a confirmation that Bendix tab six, it's covered in the standard variant. So, so yeah, it's also available for the Bendix system. Do you guys have any questions on the things that we've gone over on functionality and, and those features? All right, so that pretty much covered our initial and estimated time. So for those of you that want to stay on, I'm just going to review a little bit overview, a lot less detail on the off-highway and a couple of functionalities on the ADV side. So if you want to stay with us, um, fantastic. And if you guys aren't operating off-highway or, or ag, then thanks for your time. Um, we'll stay on here. So any questions, I'll, I'll just jump right back to them. Or we can answer you guys by email. So, so that's what we can, we can go about it. Okay. Give it a couple of seconds here, see if anybody jumps on. If not, we'll continue. All right, so continuing here, as I was saying, um, we're going to jump into Gel Test Off Highway. Um, off Highway, we haven't done many webinars. We're going to be doing one shortly in, uh, in a couple of weeks. So you can go on to our, our new webpage. By the way, Kajali USA, C O J A L I USA dot com is our new webpage. Um, you'll see the text in there in the chat. Here we have all the video logs, all the webinars, all our information. You can download our catalogs, download the remote assistance options, anything that you need from there. Um, we've been pushing to put a lot of content there. And basically because sometimes we forget how things work. So we have a video log that tells us in three to five minutes what we're looking for. And just like we did right now without having to wait for somebody to answer the phone, I think it saves us all time. So that's what, that's what we're pushing there. Okay, so remember to check us out, and that way we're going to be able to go give you guys more info. Um, before jumping on this here, we have a question. Are we going to be able to diagnose motorhomes? Well, Matt, um, if you can be more specific, we can give you more details, but you can diagnose motorhomes right, right now. Motorhomes are pretty much the chassis configured on a truck. So most of them are going to have, uh, they're going to be Freightliners with uh with a Detroit engine or a Cummins engine, and they're gonna have an Allison transmission, Wapco brakes. So you're gonna go into them and they're gonna have a nine pin connector, just like the trucks. You're gonna be able to read them and you're gonna be go, you're gonna be able to go about the, the diagnostics and the repair just in the same way. So everything that are electronically controlled, you're gonna be able to get to, the, to do that. All right, here we have a question from Chris. Um, uh, Matt, I uh, hope that was that answered. If not, just let us know in the chat, and and we are we'll give you more details. Okay, here I have a question for Chris. How do I get more information about the software? For example, trial period, cost, etc. So you can go into that web page that that we put up below uh, on top, Kajali USA. There you will have a list of all our distributors. You can contact us directly. We'll give you the support on the product. We'll always support you guys on the products so on the remote assistance. There's a question mark where you can call us in. And, and then we'll let you know who sells R21, who gives the support on it. And that way you can figure out the pricing if you want to do a trial period or whatnot, okay? But anything that has to do with 
functionalities, coverage, and, and how it's developed. You have those videos that'll help there. There's a coverage page on geltest.com that you can access as well. And, and you can give us a call or shoot us an email. So our email where you can send these questions, it's gonna be customer support at geltest.com. All right, so you see there's gonna type that up in for you guys. You shoot any questions you want through there and we'll get that as well. There's a reference point in the website where, where it says contact us and you can contact us there, okay? Having cleared that up, um, jumping into the um, jumping into the off highway side. So as you know, off highway is an added module. So there is a discount if you have the hardware already. So if you're running your trucks and you want to add off highway or ag, let us know because we're going to discount that um, just because you're, you're a customer that's engaging more into our tool. Well, um, we're going to make it more feasible for you guys. So um, any questions on how to upgrade that coverage? It's very important. We cover all the heavy equipment brands. So here are your land moving stuff, everything that's on the road, highways, and the big brands, Case, Cat, Kamatsu, Lieber, Hitachi, Kabelka, Volvo. Um, we're talking about the big three. We're talking about uh, John Deere, Volvo, uh, and Cat. Pretty much have every single functionality that's available in Cat. Everything that is engine, transmission, and hydraulics is covered for all the different vehicles that we have. Um, Volvo, same thing. We have a, for example, there's an excavator that's just running the region. Um, Volvo will come out and call and charge you $1,200. So if you have that functionality, well, I think it's pretty helpful. And then Hitachi and, and John Deere, which they have a joint venture for the cranes and, and we cover that as well. Okay. But not only those big machines, we also have mm, compact machinery. And here, probably the most important one is going to be the Bobcats uh, and the JCBs. So we see these everywhere. Everyone runs into Bobcats. These have a new systems, uh, Rex Roth engine, the Doosan engine, and those are going to get covered. There's a specific connector for that that allows you to do system calibrations and so on. So that's going to be interesting as well. And then we're going to finish off with the, the lifts, the scissor lifts, the material handling equipment, and so on. So all these that lift up crates um on, on bigger lots not just the uh, warehouses we're going to be able to get into these engines and then the way that we develop things is that first we go into the engine system and then we go to the complementary system so we're talking about engine transmission hydraulics and then whatever they have that complements so a lot of focus on the machine side because even though you guys can fix the engine you also need to fix the machine side right and here's what we were talking about the implement is something that can get calibrated. So there's a lot of angles here, pressure points, push, uh, dimensions that can get there, and then the powertrain. So it's not just the engine systems here that we're gonna be able to fix up. Right here on the, we're continuing, Matt here has a question on the light duty or gas motor homes, capability to diagnose, for instance, workhorse and Winnebago that are not commercial chassis. Um, so here, I'm, I'm, it's just going to be a, a general answer for everybody. Uh, we're a company that develops based on systems. Even though we integrate all the systems through our vehicle system scan, we do the systems separately. So if you're talking to me about a Winnebago, I need to know what engine it has, what transmission system it has, what brake system it has. Because even though we don't have the brand such as Winnebago, there's a way that you can create that brand. But you will be able to go into your engine, brakes, transmission. Okay, so. Instead of going just clicking the green button, it'll, you'll have to go to the manufacturer section and say, all right, it has a, a Dodge Ram or whatever engine, and you'll be able to do it through there. Okay. Now, continuing with the off-highway side, calibrations, we're talking about the implements, so control levers, valves, and sensors. Every time that you want to modify one of these implements, these calibrations need to be done because if not, they operate differently, and then the weight, the load, the angles are not the same. So these are pretty much advanced calibrations that help out a lot when you're in, in this field. Things that we were talking about before, the Bobcat, so the new cable, JDC 539A, that's what you see here. Um, Bobcat has uh, diagnostics on the machine and it has diagnostics on the engine. Even some engines are mechanical, so it's, it's mainly on the machine side. And it's gonna have two different connectors. And this is pretty much a switch that I'm going to go from one to another one. So the software tells you how to go to how to go about connecting it, how to go through the process on it, and then how to run the calibration and, or the calibration, the adjustments. Um, one of the things that we were working on recently was uh, the shift, the, the joystick calibration. So those are all things that are, are very relevant. And the big thing here is the Doosan engine that it's now now available. Okay. 
Um, Caterpillar, here we have the machine control module systems, calibration of the bucket, bucket and control levers, what we saw before. And then in CNH, we're going to see a lot of systems that have the, the hydraulic systems and the implement control valves. Now, Casey and Holland, this, uh, when they have these vehicles, when they have final tier four, normally when they have DEF systems, the regions are going to be available in all of them. Now, it's, it's just a little bit different that not all of them have DEF systems, so that their legislation is slightly different. So the trucks, it's it's more intense, and that one's coming more up to par. So the after treatment systems are coming more and more in, in the future. So that's where the diagnostics becomes more and more relevant. Okay. And just to finish off, what we're talking about here in this page is the Volvo calibration for the boom position sensor, um, and one of these excavators. So that's uh, it's also pretty relevant. Okay. We're talking about calibrations transmission. It allows you to set the transmission parameters. So it's, this is an automatic calibration, just like everything that we do in gel test. It's going to be able to do it automatically, just follow the instructions, and, and you go about it. And then here, um, Bosch Structural, CAT, JCB, John Deere. John Deere's, we're going all the way down. This is the smallest thing that, that we can cover, but when we're talking about the bigger ones, um, sorry, there's a line moving machine that runs the same engines as the AG 9R series. I ran into those in an oil field, and there's about 10 of those in the world. They're huge, and we have full coverage on them. So those, anything from the smallest thing that John Deere runs that has electronics on it to, to the biggest ones, all right? So VCU, vehicle control unit. So again, not just the engine, the transmission as well, and then the, the display, all right? So just a little overview of what we've been doing with the transmission systems for different brands. And then we're going to continue with our part, which is the uh, Doosan engines. That's a, that's a big one. So these are popping up everywhere. So having access to these Doosan engines is an advantage, and full coverage is going to be achieved by February next year. So you're going to have the full, full access to them. Uh, Lieber is doing a big push on engine management systems and earth moving machinery and the big cranes. So we're also increasing that for, for next year. There's a new connector on Lieber. So we're going to be expanding that coverage as well. And then, as we're saying, the, the big Volvo machines, they have the exhaust gas treatment systems. And we're talking about V3 and V4 technology, so those are advanced functions. These are going to connect with your OBD2, so um, no new connectors necessary. Finally, after having five different connectors for Volvo, you're going to be able to go with your OBD2. Okay. And to finish off, the new Volvo Penta uh, EDC engine management system uh, for vehicles of Volvo engines V2 technology. All right. So... Generators on the big side of things, they're going to be available. So when you run into some machines um, and that engine is, is bigger than expected, all you have to do is go into the engine to the generator side, and then you can access that engine. When we're talking about uh, those big gen sets that go on, on buildings, talking about gen sets that go on, um, on fracking machinery, for those of you that are near oil fields, that's going to that's gonna help out. So now that we mentioned the fracking, C18s, uh, the large Caterpillar transmissions, the large, uh, I think we have up to the QS60s with, with those engines, and we're developing more on the on the bigger and the, the oil rig side, okay? So this, as, again, as I said, last, less detail, a uh, quicker overview of the off-highway side. If you guys have any questions on this one, we'll pause again for, for a minute and, and wait for that before we jump into that last approach on, on the ag side. All right. So then, I just wanted to just clarify one thing. So just like everybody on the on the on road side of things, there's maybe ten, fifteen different alternatives that you can use. On the off highway side, there, there's not much. There's maybe one, two that are going to work out well. So this is a huge difference compared to some of the other tools that don't have off highway coverage, and and you need to buy something separate. Yeah. Just keep that in mind when we're looking for a, a tool that integrates everything in there. Um, the fact that you can add off-highway and ag always adds new business possibilities and, and features there. And I'm continuing with the ag, the ag coverage, um, these are new brands. There's a, well, we are a company that's worldwide, so there's there's a lot of brands that pop up and that sometimes they're not in, re, in your region. So there's a lot of segmentation here. Some are in Canada, some are in the Northeast, some are in the Northwest. Um, so everything that we see on the market, we bring out. There's over 40 different manufacturers that we cover. And that continues to increase because it turns out that a lot of people do tractors and they put in different engines. So it's a good thing and a bad thing, but we cover it. So that's, I think that's an advantage there. 
Here are things that we were talking about, class, Laverda, and Fence. So we're going to focus here on, on the class one, uh, Lexion tier three, and earlier harvester systems. So when we're talking about ag, we're not just talking about tractors. We're talking about harvesters. We're talking about the um, um, telehandlers, forage machinery, um, all these things. And we even have thing, uh, we even cover machinery that goes into the... Um, Sorry, I'm, I'm running out of blank right now. The um, forest machinery, okay? So all these things are gonna be covered. Anything that's pretty much generating income, picking up crops, grape harvesters, all these things, uh, sugar cane, we're gonna be able to run diagnostics on those systems. And again, not just on the engine system, but on the on the machine side, right? Continuing here, John Deere. John Deere, uh, after John Deere, I don't think there's anybody that has nearly enough coverage as we do. And to be honest, I think our, our user interface is much friendlier than than the John Deere one. And I would have to say that John Deere doesn't sell it to you. So pretty much if you want to work on a John Deere tractor and not go to the dealer, um, Jaltez is probably the best solution. And we're talking about a tool that's pretty much in the $4,000 range. And you're talking about machines that are normally two hundred and fifty to five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars $700,000. And not only that, that they have a, an output time of two, three months. So in harvest season, every down hour that they have, it's huge loss of income. So if you have the ability to run a filter, uh, run a scan and do a reset and get your tractor up and running and spend just one hour instead of having to call the dealer, but it turns out everybody in the area has the same problem and farms aren't very close to each other. So being able to do it yourself, pretty much pays for the tool or being able to go out to those farms that are close to you is well worth the the value of the tool. And then all the bi-directionals, all the advanced features and everything that, that comes out there, okay? So here we have Deer, McCormick, New Holland's Versatile. We're gonna jump into the engine and transmission. So we're adding new features, actuations and maintenance options, um, system checks, parameters and calibrations. And what I was saying before, the more exhaust gas after treatment systems that get included, the more we cover. So we got, we got that pretty much figured out. And what we do is we add them as they come across, all right? And then to finish off, we talked about that before, but this is what our new Kajali website looks like. Updates are going to be there, video logs, training sessions, and here are your gel test tubes. So when you go to youtube.com and you put gel test, there's going to be a bunch of videos. Every time that we launch an update, there's a quick three to five minute video that talks about the most important improvements. Then you have access to the vlogs, which are detailed explanations of certain actions. And then you finish off with access to our webinars, just like this one, to get more, more information, okay? So that's all I have now after going through all those three products and taking almost one hour. Sorry for that, guys. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'll hold off here for a couple minutes. And thank you for your time, your interest, and, and for participating. So again, the question on is forestry considered ag? Um, depends on the machine. So there's some machines that uh, they get contemplated in the ag side, some on the off highway side, but no problem there. Let us know what machines are in your realm of, of expertise or which ones you service or, or in your area. And we'll give you in detail what product, it, what project it's under and what coverage we have. So that's always something you could ask before purchasing a module or for doing an upgrade or something. Just give us a call and we'll tell you the coverage. Hey guys, as I said, thanks for your time. Um, we're going to be sending the, the recording of the webinar so so you guys have access to it. Check out again, check our webpage and, and so on, as I explained before. And thank you and have a great weekend. Bye.